Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So one of the cool things I love about being a software developer is the fact that you can just create anything that you want. The thing is, software developers have a tendency to want to create everything from scratch. And I understand, I like writing code, I like creating application from scratch. But the thing is, often the more efficient solution is to make use of some of the cloud tools that are available instead of having to write everything yourself. One of my goals for 2023 was to be a bit more active on Twitter. Now I use Twitter quite a lot, but I'm often more consuming content than I am creating it. And when I do come up with something interesting to say, they generally come in short bursts. I'll be writing a blog article and I come up with 10 things at once that I think are quite interesting. But rather than put all my thoughts out on Twitter as soon as I think them, it's often better to sort of drip feed those thoughts as you go along. Now I find from looking at my analytics that most of my audience is either based in the US or they're based in India. Now me based in the UK means that my time zone is gonna be a bit different to them. So for me, it's better to schedule some of my tweets throughout the day so at least there's some chance that my audience are gonna see it. Thing is, if I just post my thoughts whenever I think them, chances are that most of my audience aren't going to be awake. And therefore, it's easier for me to put them in a list, schedule them, and therefore there's more chance that people are going to be able to see my tweets. There are many tools available that let you schedule your tweets, but generally the free versions only let you schedule 10 tweets at once, and the paid ones are, you know, 20, 30, 40 dollars a month. So when I thought about doing this, I didn't want to pay for a monthly fee, because I'm probably not going to use Twitter that much, but I just wanted a way of scheduling my tweets so that I could sort of drip feed them over the course of the week. So my initial thoughts were great, I'm going to build this myself. I'm going to create a DynamoDB table full of tweets. I'm going to have a Lambda function that runs on a schedule and sends out the tweets via the API. Of course, that would have taken me several weeks to build and it probably wouldn't have been the best use of my time. So I decided to embrace no code or at least low code solutions and see if I could build a tweet scheduler based on Notion. Now obviously Notion hasn't got anything to be able to schedule tweets by itself, so I needed something that would be able to read the tweets that I put into Notion and be able to send them out, as well as update what I have in Notion to say that it's gone out so it doesn't get sent out twice. And for this, I'm using a tool called N8N. So what is N8N? You probably haven't heard of N8N, at least I hadn't until a couple of weeks ago. It's basically equivalent to If This Then That or Zapier, but on steroids. And the bonus thing is you can self-host it. Now NAN does offer a cloud plan, but it's around 20 pounds a month. And as I said, I want to try and save some money in the process of doing this. I didn't want to pay out for a tweet scheduler, so I wasn't going to pay out for their cloud hosting plan. But because you can self-host it, you can actually self-host it for free. Now I've included a link in the description below how you can self-host NAN for free. So check it out if you want to set this up. For the rest of the tutorial, I've assumed that you've already got NAN running somewhere, whether it be on the desktop, in the cloud, or on your Raspberry Pi, for example. So N8N is a bit more complicated than if this and that and Zapier. It's not just a case of connecting a few services together. You do have to put a bit of logic into it. You often have to write a little bit of code as well, but that's what makes it so powerful. You can call your own APIs, you can call other APIs, you can interact with services that they don't have integrations for, and you can really just link together anything you want without having to write tons and tons of code, which is really good. So even though it's a bit harder, if you are a software developer like myself, you probably won't find it too difficult. So one of the main pains with NAN, which you don't have with the other platforms, is that you need to set up the developer account and the API keys yourself. Now, if you're a developer anyway, it's not gonna to be too difficult, but it is an added extra that you need to do. Now with Twitter, this is a bit of a pain because their developer account platform takes about three days to set up. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if Elon is literally there proving everything himself, but it does take a little while for it to come through. So before you go ahead and do any of this, go and create a developer account. I'm not gonna go through in this tutorial how to set up a developer account with Twitter. I'm gonna assume you've already got that set up with an application. If you need to know how to do that, there's a link in the description below. It's very simple, but it does take about three days to get that approved and email come through. So what we're gonna build here is a Twitter scheduler based on a Notion Kanban board. So when you create a Kanban board in Notion, it will typically come with three states of to do, in progress and done. So for my Twitter scheduler, I'm using those three states, but I'm renaming them to idea, ready and published. So the whole point of this is that when you come up with an idea for a tweet, you can put it in the idea column and then you can spend a little bit of time to make sure that it's correct before then moving it to the ready column. And then on a schedule, our NAN automation is going to come in, read that tweet from your Kanban board and then publish it to Twitter and then move that card over to the published column. So NAN is based on workflows and the workflow that I'm going to set up is got basically five main parts to it. So the first part is the schedule. We need to work out when we want to send out these tweets. So I use a tool called Black Magic. It's developed by a fellow indie developer called Tony Din. He's quite active on Twitter. You can go and have a look. He's really good. He's created some really good tools such as DevUtils as well. 
Now, one of the things you can do with black magic is it shows you when your most engaging times are. If you do have black magic, you can go and see and see exactly when your times are. If you don't, then you're better off just sort of scheduling it a few times throughout the day. The second part is obviously reading your tweets from Notion, having a look in that ready column, finding out which ones are ready to go out and then reading the data from Notion. We then need to format the information we get to Notion in a way that's going to be understood by Twitter. We then are going to send out that tweet via the Twitter API. Now, hopefully you'll have your developer keys once you get to this point, but you can always set it up and then add in your developer keys once you have it. And then lastly, we're going to update our Notion board with a URL to the tweet that we've just sent out when it was sent out, and we're going to move that card over to published. So for me, based in the UK, I found that my most engaging times with my audience were between eight o'clock and nine o'clock in the morning, between three o'clock and four o'clock in the afternoon, and then between six o'clock and seven o'clock in the evening. Now, if you're not based in the UK or you've got a different audience to me, which is going to be the case, you're probably going to find that your engagement times are going to be a bit different. So I'm going to assume that you have a Twitter developer account, or at least you're in the process of getting one, and you already have Notion and N8N set up. If you don't have any of those, then have a look in the description and there's a link to instructions on how to set everything up. Okay, so the first thing we need to set up in Notion is our API key. So we go to settings and members, we then go to my connections, followed by develop or manage integrations. So this will take you to your integrations page. Now you can see I've already got one for NAN set up, but we'll set up another one just so you can see how you can do it. So you click new integration, I'm going to call mine NAN2, and then you can give it a logo if you want to, I'm not going to bother. And then from there, the rest of the settings we're just going to leave as default. So click submit. And this is going to give you an internal integration token, which is your API key. So if you click show on this, it will give you an option to copy it. And let's copy that. So next we need to go to NAN, which I assume you have set up. Click add credentials, type in Notion. You'll see we've got Notion API or Notion OAuth 2. So we're just using the Notion API in this case. Click continue put in the API key and then click save. And here we can see it's all working correctly. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a schedule trigger that is gonna allow us to run this workflow at a certain time each day. So we're gonna add in our schedule, we're gonna click the plus. There's a bunch of options you can use here for how the workflow is gonna run, which is gonna click on a schedule. And you'll get to a page like this where you can add in the different trigger rules. Now you can set here intervals between days and months. For me, I think the easiest thing is just set up a custom cron job. So you can see it's got a an idea for an expression here, but we're just gonna want ours running every day. So if you want it running at say three o'clock in the afternoon, we're just gonna do 15 star, 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 and that's gonna give us three o'clock every single day. You can add in a few more options if you want to, to specify different times of the day, but for now, I'm just gonna specify these ones. So before we go ahead and create the next node, we need an actual board in Notion to be able to talk to. So in Notion, we need to create a new board. So we're gonna click the plus button. So we need to give it a name, let's call it Twitter. And then we click on the board option and we're gonna create a new database. So this is what the board looks like when we first create it. I wanna rename what these are called. So rather than to do in progress and complete, I'm gonna have idea ready and published. So to do that, we go to here, we go to properties, and then we've got status here and we're gonna change what each of these are called. So here they've actually got not started in progress and done. We click this, let's change this to idea. We're gonna change this one to ready. I'm gonna change this one to published. Now you can see these haven't shown up on the board just yet. So we're gonna change this and go to group, group by, and then just pick status again. There you go. And there you can see it's all updated with the new items. So the next thing we're gonna do is add a few more properties in which we're gonna update in N810. So things like when it was created, when it was published, and the URL for the tweet that we sent out. So if we double click on one of these cards, we're gonna do add property. So let's add in the creator time. We'll leave it as created time. We're gonna add in a new time, which is gonna be published. And I'm just gonna change this to a 24 hour clock because that's what I like to see. And then we're gonna add in another property, which is gonna be the URL. So again, this is all just gonna be blank, but it'll be pointing to the tweet that was sent out automatically. So that's our board all set up. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update one of these cards and put in information. Let's call this just Twitter test. So the title doesn't really matter because we're gonna put the contents of the tweet into the body of this card. I'm just gonna call this I love NAN and just leave it like that. And then we're gonna drag this into ready. When we add our integration into NAN, we're just gonna filter this board by the ready column. So we're not gonna see any of the other tweets that we're either thinking of sending out or already sent out. So the last thing that we need to do in Notion is give permission for NAN to read our Notion board. Now this is one of the steps that I always seem to forget. 
and I wonder why it's not working. So what you need to do is you need to click on these three dots up in the corner, click on add connections, and then we're gonna search for our NAN connection that we added. So I've got two here, I'm just gonna add in my first one. Click on confirm, and then NAN will now have access to this Twitter board. So back in N810, we're gonna to go to back to canvas, and we're gonna add a new node. In this case, we're gonna search for Notion. So we want the Notion API. You need to pick your credentials. I've got two set up, but you should only just have one. And then you go to resources, you need database page for this one. The operation we're going to do is get many and then you need to select the board that you set up. So here's Twitter on this case. We don't want to return all of them. We're going to do a bit of filtering in a minute, but we are only going to have one each time because we want each time this to run to pick up the oldest tweet that's sitting in that ready list. And that's the one we're going to send out. So we'll limit this to one. We're going to undo the simplify option. We're going to change the filter and we're going to put in JSON here. If we expand this, I'm going to copy in some JSON. If you have a look at my post in the description, you'll see a full blog post showing the details of how to set this up. So this is the JSON that we're going to use. So it's quite a simple filter. We've got and, but we've only got one thing that we're searching on anyway. Property is status and the status needs to equal ready. So that's just selecting our middle ready column. So we need to add a sort property here so we can select in our case, we want the created time as the one we want to sort by. We're then going to tick timestamp because it is a time. And then we're going to change the direction to ascending. So if we actually do execute node, this should give us some data back. So we've got some data back. You can see it appears as a table, but if you click on JSON, you can see it as a JSON object. So this is the API response that we've got back from Notion. Now, one of the important points that you'll notice is that we don't actually have that I love NAN message in here. The only thing that we are displaying is the properties of that card. So the last thing we're going to do on this one is we're going to change the name of the node. So you can actually reference the nodes by name in the later nodes. So it's going to be easy if we can see what this one does. So let's change this one to get ready tweet. And then we're going to go back to our canvas. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create another node that is going to read the information that's inside the card. Now, annoyingly, the Notion node that you've got by default, the one that comes in when we type in Notion, doesn't have anything that's going to give us that data. But we can do an API call to get that. So if we do HTTP request, they're going to create a new one. So we're going to call this one get page. Next, we need to put in the URL here. So we've got here, we've got an ID that we're going to need to use. Now I'm going to copy and paste this URL in. Again, you can look at the blog post to get the actual full URL that you need to use. So here you can see if we change this to expression, we're getting the ID from the JSON object from the previous node. And you can see here what the actual output is going to be like. So for authentication, we're going to use predefined credential type because we've already got Notion set up. And we change this to Notion and then we can select our credential that we had previously set up. And then lastly, we need to send some headers through because that's what the API is expecting. So for the Notion API, they're expecting a Notion version header and the value needs to be 2022.06.28. So if we execute this, we should get some data back. There we go. If we scroll down, you can see paragraph here with some information with rich text and the I love NAN. So now we've got that information coming back from Notion, we need to format that JSON into something we can send to Twitter. So we click back to canvas and then we're going to add in a node called the code node. So as I said before, one of the best things about this is the fact you can write your own code which means we can pretty much do anything that we want to do. So there's a few options when you have this. There's either run once for all items or you can run once for each item. In our case, we're just going to do run once for all items because we're only ever going to have one item anyway. So again, I'm going to copy and paste some code that I've written earlier and I'll explain what it does. So here we're getting the results from that previous node. Everything that comes in from an NAN node is always in an array. So we're just going to get the first object from that page and get the JSON results. We're going to build up a tweet from the information that we have from that JSON an object so here if we scroll down to paragraph we have this i love nan um, but in fact you're going to have like multiple paragraphs of text potentially that you need to put in so here we're going through each of these results and we're finding the ones where the type is paragraph and then for each of them we're finding that rich text we don't really care about things like bold or anything else we just want the plain text so we're grabbing that plain text and we're adding it in and then we're putting a, a slash n which is a, a new line character if we have something that's a paragraph but it doesn't actually have any text in it we're going to add in just a new line character only if it's it's not the last bit of text on your cart. And then lastly, we need to return the tweet. We need to do it in a bit of JSON. So if I execute this, you'll see what it comes out as. So you can see here, we just get tweet and then I love NAN. 
And again, like the previous object, we're going to have everything is going to be in an array, but we're only going to ever have one thing here. So for our next step, we need to send our tweet to Twitter. Now, NAN has got a node ready that you can use for this, but when I tried to use it, it didn't work. So to do this, I'm basically using the HTTP request node again, which is then going to call Twitter. So again, we click on plus and we're going to do HTTP, make a new HTTP request. Obviously, we need to change this to post because we're going to be posting to Twitter. I'm going to change this node name to post to Twitter. So we need the URL, which I got from the Twitter API documentation, and we need to do authentication. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this video, it does take about three days to get that information. So if you have it already, then you can put it in. If you don't, then you can always add it in later. So here we're going to do general credential type. So the auth type we're going to set to iauth1 and we're going to select our credential so we can do create new and set up an iauth credential this is where you put all your information in again have a look at the blog post it's got which details you need to put in there so we're going to click twitter iauth1 and that's all my twitter authentication details so obviously we need to send a body here so we click send body json is fine and i'm just going to keep the using fields below now twitter has just one parameter in their body which is text so we put in text and then we can just drag and drop our tweet in from here and that's what's going to get sent out so i'm going to click execute node and this is going to send i love nan to my twitter account which i'm going to promptly delete once it's out there so if you're following me on twitter and you happen to be watching at the same time or if you've got the notification bell on then you might see the i love nan come up and now you know why so let's click execute node and see what happens Great, so we can see here that it's sent and we have some data there as well. So we have the ID that is sent out and the text that was sent as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this, which means that we can use it again later without having to rerun this note. So if I click back to canvas, we can see here we've got one item left. So the last thing we want to do is update that notion board so that card moves from ready into published. And we can also include some more information onto that card so we know where that tweet is. We can then click on the plus again. We're going to use the standard Notion node again. And again, we select our credentials. We're going to change this to database page. And this time our operation is going to be to update. So we need to pick an ID here. So we're going to go back to get ready tweet. And this is the ID of the page. And we just drag and drop this in and that will appear. So you can see here we've got node, get ready tweet, and then JSON, and then we're selecting the ID. Then we need to add in some properties that we're actually going to update. So we click add property and this is going to grab the properties from our Notion board. So here we want to change the status. So the status is going to change to published and we are going to add in a property which is URL. So the URL that we want to put in is going to be different depending on who you are. So what we're interested in is on this post to Twitter node. So we want this ID. So this ID appears in the URL of all your tweets but we need to build up the URL string ourselves. So for me, my Twitter handle is AlexHyattDev. So that's what I've got in here. Please follow me on Twitter. But of course yours is gonna be a bit different, but the format is always gonna be HTTPS, twitter.com, your Twitter handle, forward slash status, and then the ID. So you can see here what it's actually gonna be when we do it. Lastly, we're gonna click execute node and test that this works. Great, so we've got back uh, output, which means it's worked and it's run. Now, if we go back to Notion, we can see that this card has moved from ready over to published. And that's it. And now you can experiment with the amount of times that you send it out and you can put as many things into that Notion board that Notion can handle without having to pay 20, 30, 40 pounds a month for a Twitter scheduler. If you like this video, then please like it, please comment. It really helps the algorithm and helps this video be seen. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.